Hello, and thank you for watching this weather update for Cotton Incorporated, brought to you by Agrable, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agrable. Well, in last week's video, I stressed two big features that dominated the weather landscape over the last seven days. First was how an upper-level cutoff low was going to sit and spin over the eastern third of the country, knocking temperatures back and bringing in a lot of rain to fields in the mid-Atlantic states of North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. These rains certainly hampered harvest efforts as they persistently tracked over the same regions for several days over last week. Meanwhile, Fields in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia had a very dry week, allowing for a lot of field work. One region that desperately needed this rain, though, but did not get any of it, was the northern half of Georgia. We can see by examining the latest U.S. drought monitor how drought there has reached the extreme drought category. Nearby states are feeling this drier weather as well, as fields in Alabama and Mississippi are also feeling the first stages of drought. What is amazing to recognize is that the fields in South Carolina and North Carolina are between 200 and 600 percent of normal for rainfall over the last 30 days. So there's quite a large range in terms of water availability in the soil right now. But knowing where we stand with rainfall and drought is important as we look at the next week's rainfall forecast. Well, here are the totals through Wednesday morning, October 12th. Your eye is probably immediately drawn to the very heavy rainfall along the southeastern coast of Florida through North Carolina. In fact, the white color you see here is not a region of no rainfall. It's actually so much that it's off the color scale that I've created here, which goes well over 8 inches of rain. And we're expecting this rain to come along with Hurricane Matthew as it tracks along the southeastern coast of the United States. Well, Matthew is the second big feature we alluded to last week, so let's get to the latest. Earlier this week, Matthew obtained a Category 4 strength rating on the Sapphire simpson scale as it tracked between Haiti and Cuba with 145 mile per hour winds. The damage reports have been catastrophic. This video is from Mike Thies, who chases hurricanes. This is the kind of destruction that 145 miles per hour can do, as this video here shows the destruction on the island of Cuba. Now, some of the satellite images that we've seen so far this past week have been quite eerie. This satellite image, which was not altered, did really look like half a skull. If you're having trouble seeing it, maybe this will help. Now, a little less scary than that image is this one. At one point, Matthew looked like an elephant. See the head, the ear, and the trunk? Okay, enough of finding things in the clouds. Let's look now at the forecast. Matthew's track has been extremely difficult to forecast, and with each new forecast update, the track has slowly moved west. As of Wednesday evening, Matthew was entering the Bahamas and was forecast to brush along the east coast of Florida by Thursday evening. Hurricane warnings are out for the east coast of Florida, and I anticipate that these warnings will be extended to include Jacksonville and eventually Savannah, Georgia, and potentially as far north as Charleston, South Carolina. Here's the best guidance we have on the path of Matthew as of Wednesday night, October 5th. This animation shows sea level pressure and precipitation. Very warm sea surface temperatures and weak wind shear will allow Matthew to maintain a strong Category 2 or Category 3 strength as it nears Florida between Melbourne and Cape Canaveral. It has been exactly 4,000 days since a major hurricane, which is a Cat 3 or stronger, has hit Florida. Matthew is being steered toward the Florida and Georgia coast by the clockwise flow around a ridge in the mid-levels of the atmosphere to the north of Matthew. By late Friday, mid-level winds from the west will push Matthew to the northeast along the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. Expect wind speeds in coastal counties and cities to be above 75 miles per hour and potentially reach over 115 miles per hour. 5 to 10 feet of storm surge is expected, as are torrential rains, and in some places we're expecting over 10 inches of rain to fall. This will cause a lot of beach erosion. I'm expecting a lot of downed trees and a lot of power outages, possibly lasting for a few days for these residents. If you are in an area that has been ordered to evacuate, do not wait. Go west or go north as soon as you possibly can. This is a very serious situation. Now, as you probably noticed, Matthew's track seems to take a large loop back to the south and come back to hit Florida again. I want you to know there's a lot of uncertainty in this track, but it is a possibility. 
Now this map shows all of the different projections of Matthew's path over the next week starting on the evening of October 5th. You can see how some of the models bring Matthew back around for a second impact in Florida while many keep it out in the Atlantic. This will have to be watched very closely, and the key to this loop-the-loop -loop pattern is in the development of a ridge over the southern states. That ridge over Texas, which is just off of my map, will not only steer this hurricane, but will bring some warmer conditions back into fields in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. But that will have to be after this weekend's cool-down for those same states. For our growers in the southeastern United States, we are expecting very high rainfall totals. For fields closer to the coast, six plus inches of rain are expected in these regions right here. And remember, these parts here of the Carolinas have been extremely wet over the last 30 days. For those producers, this is going to be a very impactful landfalling hurricane. Well, thank you for watching this weather update, and as always, we at Agrable aim to bring you the most timely and useful weather forecast information so as to help you plan your operations. Thank you.